And now for our dinosaur of the day, Kentrosaurus, whose name means prickle lizard. And Kentrosaurus was requested from Cole, our patron, so thanks, Cole. Kentrosaurus was a close relative of Stegosaurus, and it was described by Edwin Hennig in 1915. Fossils were found in the Tendigaroo Formation. No complete skeletons were found, but hundreds of bones were found on German expeditions into German East Africa from 1909 to 1912. And so the first Kentrosaurus fossil was found in 1909, and Werner Janitz said in 1910 that it was a type of Stegosaur. Over 1,200 bones were found from 50 individuals. Many were destroyed during World War II, though, sadly. There's 350 specimens, though, at the Museum of Natural History in Berlin. Though multiple specimens were found, they did not die a mass death at the same time, so they don't represent a single herd, and that makes it hard to guess about their behaviors. The type species is Kentrosaurus aethiopicus. And the species name Aethiopicus comes from the provenance from Africa. Hennig did not designate a holotype in his original description, but he picked the most complete partial skeleton for his monography in 1925, which is now part of the mounted skeleton in Berlin. Hennig published his monography in 1925, but by then only one tooth had been found, and later more tooth fragments were found in a tooth-bearing bone from the lower jaw. It was very similar to Stegosaurus, but smaller. There's controversy over the name. The name is similar to the Ceratopsian Centrosaurus. And in 1916, Hennig renamed Kentrosaurus to Kentrurosaurus, which means pointed tail saurian. And then Franz Nopska from Hungary renamed the Ceratopsian Centrosaurus to Dorifosaurus, which means lance-bearing saurian. But it turns out this renaming wasn't necessary because the spellings and pronunciations are different, so Kentrosaurus is still valid, and now Kentrurosaurus is considered a junior synonym. And we always call it Centrosaurus, too. We never talk about... Dorifosaurus. Yeah. In 1993, George Olszewski classified fossils of Stegosaurus longispinus, which was named by Charles Gilmore in 1914, as Kentrosaurus longispinus. But paleontologists did not accept this, and it became its own genus, Natronsaurus which has longer tail spikes than Kentrosaurus and a slightly different pelvis and vertebrae structure. So again, Kentrosaurus was similar to, but smaller than Stegosaurus. An adult Kentrosaurus was on average about half the length of an adult Stegosaurus. In 2011, Mallison described the difference between Kentrosaurus and other dinosaurs in the Stegosauria group, and included the neural spines in the tail being vertical in the middle of the tail and having a hooked shape in the back of the tail. Kentrosaurus had elongated spikes. One specimen had a bone core length of 731 millimeters. Oof, that's 2.4 feet, so pretty huge spike. Mm hmm And spikes and plates were probably covered. Stegosaurus only had one row of plates and two rows of spikes on its tail end. Kentrosaurus had thinner spikes than Stegosaurus. They were more likely to bend. Ragno Redelstorff said in a 2013 study that based on bone histology, Kentrosaurus had a higher growth rate than Stegosaurus, though it was smaller and contradicts the idea that larger dinosaurs grew more quickly than smaller dinosaurs. Kentrosaurus had shoulder spikes, which were originally thought to be on its hips, until some Chinese Stegosaurs were found. And these similar shoulder spikes you can find on the Stegosaurus Gigantspinosaurus and Huyangosaurus. Kentrosaurus lived in the late Jurassic in Tanzania, or in what is now Tanzania. It lived in a subtropical to tropical area with seasonal rains and dry periods. Other dinosaurs in the area included Giraffa Titan, Barosaurus, Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Elaphrosaurus. Kentrosaurus was about 15 feet or 4.5 meters long and weighed one ton. It had hoof-like claws on its toes and a small elongated head. It had a small brain about the size of a walnut, but it had a good sense of smell. Scientists found enough Kentrosaurus brain cavities to gather data on its intelligence and sense of smell. Kentrosaurus probably had two rows of small plates on its neck and back and spikes on the hip and tail, and the longest ones were on the tail. The plates were not much protection, they were more for display. Again, it had these long spikes on each shoulder. It may have used its spikes for defense, it also had a muscular tail. And it was a large tail, more than half of its length is the tail. Because of its center of mass, not much weight is supported by the front legs, which means that Kentrosaurus had a tight turning radius. Mm. Heinrich Mallison created a digital skeleton model of Kentrosaurus in 2005 to study its range of motion and found that it had a flexible neck. Mallison also made models of Kentrosaurus' tail. The tail had at least 40 caudal vertebrae, which means it was very mobile, could swing at a 180-degree arc at potentially up to 31 miles per hour or 50 kilometers per hour, 
and rapid swings could have slashed through skin or broken bones, and direct blows with the tail spikes would fracture bones. This would have really hurt small and medium theropods, and potentially hurt large theropods. Yeah. At this speed, Mallison wrote, quote, the spikes could penetrate deeply into soft tissues or between ribs and were able to shatter bones. He adds, quote, penetrating impacts at 10 meters per second created forces greater than those sufficient to fracture a human skull, end quote. That sounds almost like a mace, that medieval ball with spikes on it or something like that. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Based on recent computer models of stegosaurs, Kentrosaurs probably had better posture than normally depicted. There's no horizontal neck or neck sloping down, but rather would have had a neck angled upwards and its head held a little higher than its back. Kentrosaurs could quickly rotate around the hips and keep the tail pointed at a predator, though a fast predator could still get to the tail base, which wouldn't have hurt as much when it swung its tail, and then would have, could have attacked Kentrosaurus's unprotected neck and upper body. But in order to kill a Kentrosaurus, it may have required hunting in packs. Because Kentrosaurus had a flexible neck, it could look over its back, so it could possibly throw its head back to keep looking at an attacker. If Kentrosaurus was a herding animal, working together with multiple tails would have helped keep them safe from predators. One early interpretation of how Kentrosaurus defended itself was to charge through attackers with its spines, similar to modern porcupines. When walking, Kentrosaurus had an upright posture but sprawled in defense, so it may have sprawled in defending itself. It had short forelimbs and long hind limbs. And Kentrosaurus also showed sexual dimorphism. It seems that there may have been more females than males, at least that we know of so far. There's two types of thigh bones, and one, which I think is the female type, had larger, more stout thigh bones than the other. So females probably had the thicker thigh bones. Kentrosaurus was an herbivore. It mostly swallowed its food in large chunks. It had a beak that could bite off plant material. It was considered to be a low browser for food, but could rear up to get some vegetation. On all fours, it could eat food that was up to 5 feet 7 inches, or 1.7 meters high, but it could also rear up on its hind legs to reach higher vegetation. Because of its long tail, its center of mass was close to its hind limbs, so it could potentially support itself in a stand-up position, and the tail would have either been fully lifted or used as a third leg, though Bob Bakker said that he thinks the tail wasn't stiff enough to be a third leg. Standing up, Kentrosaurus could have reached food as high as 11 feet, or 3.3 meters. Pretty good. Yeah. You can see a composite skeletal mount of Kentrosaurus in the Natural History Museum in Berlin, Germany. The mount in Berlin is comprised of a nearly complete tail, hip, dorsal vertebrae, and parts of limbs from one individual. The mount was dismantled in 2006 to 2007 and remounted with an improved pose. The brain case and spine and other parts are thought to have been lost in World War II, but then were actually later found in a drawer of a basement cupboard. So, good news. Mm -hmm. The Museum of the Institute for Geosciences of the Erberher Karls University, Tübingen, has a composite mount with about 50% original Kentrosaurus bones. Kentrosaurus belongs to the group Threophora, also called Enoplosauria, which is a group of dinosaurs with dermal armor and includes stegosaurs and ankylosaurs. Speaking of stegosaurs and how they had shorter front limbs and longer rear limbs, I wonder if it could swim, like how Stegosaurus might have been able to. Maybe. Hard to know. Yeah. Be hard to find those tracks. <laughs> yeah. So, Stegosauridae is a family of Theropthoran dinosaurs, and this includes Stegosaurus more closely related to Stegosaurus than Huayangosaurus, which is again the Chinese Stegosaur with the shoulder spikes. Stegosauridae lived into the late Cretaceous. They had rows or osteoderms along their neck, trunk, and tail. The plates and spikes were used for either display, thermal regulation, or defense. Their front legs were shorter than their rear legs, and they were powerful but slow. They could shear small branches. Their skulls are shallower than early stegosaurs, and they have two subfamilies, Decentrurinae and Stegosaurinae, and Stegosaurinae are larger. 